scale. And um, here we see this first sort of cover piece, uh, one of the late etchings, Europa, a prophecy, Lambeth, printed by Will Blake, 1794. Five windows light a cabin man. Through one he breathes the air. Through one his music of the spheres. Through one the eternal vine flourishes that he may receive the grapes. Through one can look and see small portions of the eternal world that ever groweth. Through one himself pass out what time he pleases, but he will not, for stolen joys are sweet, and bread eaten in secret pleasant. So sang a fairy mocking as he sat on a strict tulip, thinking none saw him. When he ceased, I started from the trees and caught him in my hat as boys knocked down a butterfly. How know you this, said I, small sir, where did you learn this song? Seeing himself in my possession, thus he answered me. My master, I am yours, command me, for I must obey. Then tell me what is the material world, and is it dead? He laughing answered, I will write a book on leaves of flowers, if you will feed me on love thoughts, and give me now and then a cup of sparkling poetic fancies. So when I am tipsy, I'll sing to you this soft lute, and show you all alive the world, when every particle of dust breathes forth its joy. I took him home in my warm bosom as we went along, wild flowers I gathered and he showed me each eternal flower. He laughed aloud to see them whimper because they were plucked. They hovered round me like a cloud of incense. When I came into my parlour and sat down and took my pen to write, my fairy sat upon the table and dictated Europe. Preludium The nameless shadowy female rose from out of the breast of Orc, her shaky hair brandis in the winds of Entharmon, and thus her voice arose. O mother Enitharmon, wilt thou bring forth other sons? To cause my name to vanish, that my place may not be found. For I am fated with travel, like the dark cloud, disburdened in the day of dismal thunder. My roots are brandished in the heavens, my fruits in earth beneath. Surge foam and labour into life, first born and first consumed, consumed and consuming. Then why shouldst thou, accursed mother, bring me into life? I wrap my turban of thick clouds around my labouring head, and fold the sheety waters as a mantle round my limbs. Yet the red sun and moon, and all the overflowing stars rain down prolific pains. Unwilling I look up to heaven, unwilling count the stars, sitting in fathomless abyss of my immortal shrine. I seize their burning power, and bring forth howling terrors, all devouring fiery kings, devouring and devoured roaming on dark and desolate mountains, in forests of eternal death, shrieking in hollow trees. Ah, Mother Emeth Amon, stamp not with solid form this vigorous progeny of fires. I bring forth from my teeming bosom myriads of flames, and thou dost stamp them with a signet, then they roam abroad and leave me void as death. Ah, I am drowned in shady woe, 
and visionary joy. And who shall bind the infinite with an internal band? To compass it with swaddling bands, and who shall cherish it with milk and honey? I see it smile and I roll in wood, and my voice is past. She ceased and rolled her shady clouds into the secret place. Lord have mercy on us. A prophecy. The deep of winter came, what time the secret child descended through the orient gates of the eternal day. War ceased and all the troops like shadows fled to their abodes. Then Enitharmon saw her sons and daughters rise around. Like pearly clouds they meet together in the crystal house. And Los, possessor of the moon, joyed in the peaceful night, thus speaking while his numerous sons shook their bright fiery wings. Again the night is come, that strong Athona takes his rest, and risen and loosed from chains glows like a meteor in the distant north. Stretch forth your hands and strike the elemental strings awake the thunders of the deep. The shrill winds wake till all the sons of Urizen look out and envy loss, seize all the spirits of life and bind their warbling joys to our loud strings, bind all the nourishing sweets of earth to give us bliss that we may drink the sparkling wine of loss. And let us laugh at war, despising toil and care, because the days and nights of joy in lucky hours we move. Arise, O walk from the deep den, first born of any mouth on rise, and we will crown thy head with garlands of the ruddy vine. For now thou art bound, and I may see thee in the hour of bliss, my eldest born. The horrent demon rose, surrounded with red stars of fire, whirling about in furious circles round the immortal fiend. Then in Narthmon, down descended into his red light, and thus her voice rose to her children, the distant heavens reply. Now comes the night of Ennith Marmon's joy. Who shall I call? Who shall I send? That woman, lovely woman, may have dominion. Arise, O Rindra, thee I call. And Palamma Brondi, go tell the human race that woman's love is sin, that an eternal life awaits the worms of sixty winters. In an allegorical abode, where existence hath never come, forbid all joy, and from her childhood shall the little female spread nets in every secret path. My weary eyelids draw towards the evening, my bliss is yet but new. Arise! Arise, O Rintra, eldest born, second to none but Ork. O lion, Rintra, rise thy fury from thy forest black. Bring Palambron, horned priests, skipping upon the mountains, and silence, Elytria, the silver-bowed queen. Rinra, where hast thou hid thy bride? Weep she in desert shades? Alas, my Rinra, bring the lovely jealous, Ocalyithron. Arise, my son, bring all thy brethren, all thou king of fire. Prince of the sun, I see thee with thy innumerable race, thick as the summer stars, but each ramping his golden mane shakes. Then thine eyes rejoice because of strength, O Rinra, furious king. And if a marmon slept eighteen hundred years, man was a dream. The night of nature and their harps unstrung, she slept in the middle of her nightly song. Eighteen hundred years a female dream. 
Shadows of men in fleeting bands upon the wings divide the heavens of Europe, till Albion's angel, smitten with his own plagues, fled with his bands. The cloud bears hard on Albion's shore, filled with the mortal demons of futurity. In council gather the smitten angels of Albion. The cloud bears hard upon the council house, down rushing on the heads of Albion's angels. One hour they lay buried beneath the ruins of that hall, but as the stars rise from the salt lake, they arise in pain, in troubled mists, all clouded by the terrors of struggling times. Following in thoughts perturbed, they rose from the bright ruins silent, the fiery king who sought his ancient temple, serpent formed that stretches out its shady length along the island white. Round him rolled his clouds of war. Silent the angel went along the infinite shores of Thames to golden Verulam. There stand the venerable porches, that high towering near their oak surrounded pillars, formed of massy stones uncut with toll, stones precious such eternal in the heavens, of colours twelve, few known on earth, give light in the opaque, placed in the order of the stars when the five senses whelmed, in deluge all the earth-born man, then turned the fluxile eyes into two stationary orbs, concentrating all things, the ever-varying spiral ascents to the heavens of heavens, were bended downward and the nostrils' golden gates shut, turned outward, barred and petrified against the infinite. Thought changed the infinite to a serpent, that which pitieth, to a devouring flame, the man fled from its face and hid in forests of night. Then all the eternal forests were divided into earths rolling in circles of space, that like an ocean rushed and overwhelmed all except this finite wall of flesh. Then was the serpent temple formed, image of infinite shut up in finite revolutions, and man became an angel, heaven the mighty circle turning, God the tyrant crowned. Now arrived the ancient guardian at the southern porch, that planted thick with trees of blackest leaf, and in a veil obscured enclosed the stone of night. Oblique it stood, or hung with purple flowers and berries red, image of that sweet south. Once open to the heavens and elevated on the human neck, now overgrown with hair and covered with a stony roof, feet downward as he sunk beneath the tractive north, that round the arranging world draws the dizzy inquirer to his grave. Albion's angel rose upon the stone of night. He saw risen on the Atlantic, and his brazen book that kings and priests had copied on earth expanded from north to south. And the clouds and fires pale rolled round in the night of Enitharmon. Round Albion's cliffs and London's walls, still in its Ramon slept. Rolling volumes of grey mist involved churches, palaces, towers, for Urizen unclasped his book, feeding his soul with pity. The youth of England hid in gloom, cursed the pained heavens, compelled into the deadly night to see the form of Albion's angel. Their parents brought them forth, and aged ignorance preaches, 
canting on a vast rock, perceived by those senses that are closed from thought, bleak, dark, abrupt, it stands and overshadows London City. They saw his bony feet on the rock, the flesh consumed in flames. They saw the serpent temple lifted above, shadowing the island white. They heard the voice of Albion's angel howling in flames of all, seeking the trump of the last doom. Above the rest, the howl was heard from Westminster, louder and louder. The guardian of the secret codes forsook his ancient mansion, driven out by the flames of Orc. His fur robes and false locks adhered and grew one with his flesh and nerves and veins shot through them, with dismal torment sick and open wind. He fled, groveling along Great George Street through the park gate. All the soldiers fled from his sight. He dragged his torments to the wilderness. Thus was the hell through Europe for Orc rejoiced to hear the howling shadows, but Palamabron shot his lightnings trenching down his wide back, and Rintra hung with all his legions in the nether deep. Then Ithamon laughed in her sleep to see a woman's triumph. Every house again, every man bound, the shadows are filled with spectres and the windows wove over with curses of iron. Over the doors thou shalt not, and over the chimneys fear is written, with bands of iron round their necks, fastened into the walls, the citizens in leaden jives, the inhabitants of suburbs walk heavy, soft, and bent are the bones of villages. Between the clouds of Urizen, the flames of Orc roll heavy around the limbs of Albion's guardian, his flesh consuming, howlings and hissings, shrieks and groans and voices of despair arise around him in the cloudy heavens of Albion, furious. The red limbed angel seized in horror and torment, the trump of the last doom, but he could not blow the iron tube. Thrice he essayed, presumptuous to awake the dead to judgment. A mighty spirit leaped from the land of Albion. Named Newton, he seized the trump and blowed the enormous blast. Yellow as leaves of autumn, the myriads of angelic hosts fell through the wintry skies, seeking their graves, rattling their hollow bones in howling and lamentation. Then Enitharmon woke, nor knew that she had slept, and eighteen hundred years were fled, as if they had not been. She called her sons and daughters to the sports of night within her crystal house, and thus her song proceeds. Arise, Ethinthus, though the earthworm call, let him call in vain till the night of holy shadows and human solitude is past. Ethinthus, queen of waters, how thou shinest in the sky! My daughter, how do I rejoice for thy children flock around, like the gay fishes on the wave when the cold moon drinks the dew? Ethinthus, thou art sweet as comforts to my fainting soul, for now thy waters warble round the feet of Enitharmon. Manathu, Vorchion, I behold thee flaming in my halls, light of thy mother's soul, I see thy lovely eagles round, thy golden wings are my delight, and thy flames of soft delusion. Where is my luring bird of Eden, Luther's silent love?
Leaf of the many coloured bow delights upon thy wings, soft soul of flowers, Luther, sweet smiling pestilence, I see thy blushing light. Thy daughters many changing revolve like sweet perfumes ascending, O Luther, silken queen. Where is the youthful Antamon, prince of the pearly dean? O oh, Anathmon, why wilt thou leave thy mother Anathamon? Alone I see thee crystal fall, floating upon the bosom there, with lineaments of gratified desire. My Anathamon, the seven churches of Luther, seek thy love. I hear the soft Ruthoon in Enitharmon's tents. Why wilt thou give up woman's secrecy, my melancholy child? Between two moments bliss is ripe. O oh, theatre woman, robbed of joy, I see thy salt tears flow down the steps of my crystal house. So and thermal. The secret dwellers of dreamful caves Arise and please the haunt theme With your melodious songs Still all your thunders go And bind your horses black Hawk, smile upon my children Smile, son of my afflictions Arise, O oh hawk, and give Our mountains joy of thy red light she ceased all wherefore that sport beneath the solemn moon, waking the stars of risen with their immortal songs that nature felt through all her paws, the enormous reverie till morning oped the eastern gate, and everyone fled to his station, and Enitharmon wept. But terrible orc, when he beheld the morning in the east, shot from the heights of Enitharmon, and in the vineyards of red France appeared the light of his fury. The sun glowed fiery red, the furious terrors flew around on golden chariots raging with red wheels dropping with blood, the lions lash with wrathful tails, the tigers couch upon the prey and suck the ruddy tide, and Enith Marmon groans and cries in anguish and dismay. Then loss arose his head, he reared in snaky thunders clad, and with a cry that shook all nature to the utmost pole, called all his sons to the strife of blood. Finina.